My name is Dr Jane Hodson. I'm a senior lecturer here in the School of English at the University of Sheffield and I'm also faculty director for external engagement um, in the Faculty of Arts and Humanities. The Tales from the Ivory Tower project is all about getting academics to find ways to talk about their research um, that as, as academics sometimes we're not very good at. We are story making animals. When we try and process information, we do it by putting events in an order. When you're an academic, what you're trained to do is to talk about the, the wider academic field, to explain how that field grew up, and then to finally explain what your own personal contribution is to it and how your work makes an advance on what was known before. And the problem is that can be quite dull for people who aren't academics. It's not about dumbing down, but it's about finding different entry points, different ways of telling the story of your research so that you start with the thing that's really interesting and um, compelling and, and starting with that and, and telling a story about what it is you do and why, and why it's important and why it's interesting. By working with a storyteller, by working with Tim, we help people to find different ways to talk about their research, to start out by talking about what excites them, what interests them, when was the moment that they really connected with their research, what, what happened by accident that actually led to them having a really important breakthrough in understanding what they do. So I've been working with academics for about the last two and a half years, taking them through a kind of process of telling their stories. One of the things I do is I make sure that they see me telling stories. They have a chance to experience how powerful just the act of someone standing up and telling can be. And she turned it against the wall. She covered over all the windows in the house. One of the things I do is I get them to talk about their own research to each other because that's often the first way in. When people start talking to people from totally different disciplines, they realise they reconnect with what's interesting to them and also they see how interesting that is to other people and from that often they, they, you know, they realise how many stories they have to tell. Uh, I explore the kind of big obvious challenges, I talk a little bit about performance techniques and then a lot of the work I do is just getting them back, practising their stories, getting them to tell stories to each other, getting them to learn by listening as well as doing. And during that trip over to I feel like there's a growing emphasis being put on public fact, engagement, both from within that. universities so uh, and from politically, from funders, and also from researchers themselves that are, are increasingly wanting to share what they're doing. And when we ask that question of how, as a researcher with a great amount of expertise, but who is immersed in a really technical language, in a very detailed world, how do you share what it is that you're passionate about with the general public? Stories are the really obvious answer. And it's very rewarding for me to kind of almost unlock, um, almost unlock the secrets of academia and see people going from that process of having something that they care about but that they have often had very negative experiences in terms of talking about to taking them to a stage in time where they're happy standing up in front of a, an audience of the general public and delivering a story that, that tells a tale from their research. If Johann Baptist von Spix, a German naturalist, had never come back from the Brazilian rainforest in 1820 with his single dead blue parrot. If he hadn't found the Spix hiding among the trees. Perhaps I would not be telling you this story now. So one of the questions the I always ask is academics is what they feel are the, the barriers that are in the way of them engaging with the public. And there are some things that keep on cropping up. One is the idea that their language is very technical. Um, one is the idea that they've got to present all of the different conflicting points of view. Obviously in academia, you never just present one idea, you have to present all of the counter arguments, otherwise no one takes you seriously. Well, to the general public, they want that one story, that clear thread. There's also a lot of people who are quite reluctant to talk because they think if they're talking about physics or maths, people will just switch off. And stories are great there because they have that human connection and that human connection can help you kind of power through almost whatever um, difficulties or, or perceived difficulties that the topic may bring with it. But I'm quite adamant that there are stories in all of these faculties, all of these departments. And I think one of the things that really w that researchers can forget is that they exist. 
they have a life, they have a relationship to their topic. When you're writing papers, you don't get to talk about you know, how you feel about what you're doing. But when you're telling those stories, that's incredibly important. It's brilliant for the listeners to think, oh yeah, now I understand a little bit about why this person is interested in maths. And sometimes those personal narratives can act as ways into talking about what might seem like incredibly uh, erudite or difficult to understand concepts. So yeah, I'm quite, I'm quite keen on everyone having a chance to do this kind of work. I think that anybody who's taken part in the workshops and had the opportunity to present as part of Festival of the Mind will find that actually it's a really important influence on how they present their work, how they talk to the public and indeed how they give lectures or, or even academic papers. Um, it gives you new ways in um, to open your research up and, and make it accessible and interesting and hopefully make people care about your research as much as you do. I hope that the audience go away with a new sense of how relevant and how important an institution like the University of Sheffield is and how there's so many different areas and fields that are being, that are being explored. That there are so many different mine shafts that we've got researchers down digging up looking for new discoveries. And also a sense that that, that knowledge doesn't just belong to academics, that it isn't the the purview, that, 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 that universities don't have a monopoly on what they're doing, that actually these are public institutions and that everyone should be excited about and engaged with the kind of research that's being done.